to do the smart facial recognitions, clock in or clock out systems. This put the members in my group, which is Lao Guang Chen, Tang Wei Dong, Master Edgar Chun, and also Wang Shei, which is me. And my student ID is 2107069. We're going to talk about the problem statement in the next, next issue, which is we can know that the problem issue of the clock in and clock out system was actually the time consuming, which is the employee needs to spend a long time to wait for the ver verifications. And so the second is the security, which is the weakness is not only to enable unauthorized access, but also to compromise the accuracy of attendance record, which gives the potential leading to the payroll fraud and, so and also to decrease the operational security. So by solving the issue, here is the objective of our our assignments is to solve this problem by enhance the efficiency and user experience, by shorten the reading time and also having the smooth application process by using face detections. And second is to strengthen the security measure by applying more secure and reliable authentication method that is to minimize the minimize the risk than uh, traditional measures like identity cards and also clean code. Hi sir, my name is Master Karacho and my student ID is 2001610. And today I'm going to present on my AWS, uh, AWS service on this uh, for our system is my flow data circle, uh, the Amazon S3 bucket and trigger the image recognition to the Lambda function and, and uh, go to the Amazon recognition service and also store the employee detail in the Amazon Dino DB. So let's move on to the Amazon S3 bucket. For the Amazon S3 bucket, I've created a bucket called my employee image storage with user store employee full name and also the department name. Yeah, this one is simulator uh, employee detail. And when you click on upload, uh, upload the photo, uh, for example, I take the John White and cleaning department. And I'm here. After successfully upload, yeah, after successfully upload, you go to your lambda function. Okay. Lambda. Uh, go to lambda. I create a function called employee registration, which are uh, many for this flow. And there's a code for this, which means uh, the bucket. Yeah. For the bucket, we have the image name. Uh, face ID, for example, the key speed for you is to the full name and also speed the image name and store the uh, register employee as the face ID, full name department of the uh, the photo format just I showed just now and also register the bucket with collection ID employees. Uh, uh, this one is for the Amazon recognition uh, to register employee to put the employee ID on it and also store in the Dynamo DB detail. And this are the for the Amazon Lambda function. And let's move on to the Amazon recognition service. It's used to analyze and uh, return the face ID for employee. For example, using the CL, uh, AWS CLI to create a collection uh, called collection and collection ID name as employees and following the region which uh, which I am using currently for this system. And after successfully store, we show out the AWS recognition, account ID, version ID, which means successfully call it. Uh, this uh, Amazon recognition service is used with the Lambda function, uh, create a version ID, call employee, yeah, makes it work. And after then, it, after we done all we run, we can will prove the CloudWatch log to show the whether the process is successfully or not. And let's move on to the latest move just now for the, yeah, this time. And we can see the John White cleaning is stored in a the face record. And yeah, stored in my employee image storage from the bucket and also the face ID. And yeah, and the following detail of the employee just with the Amazon recognition. Okay, so let's move on to the Last flow of my presentation is the Amazon Dynamo DB, which uses to store the employee data on it. Okay, let's move on to Amazon Dynamo DB. So on the table, I've created a table called employee, which is store the employee details. Uh, click on the export detail item. We can see all the employee details are shown here. For example, the department name, which is the full name, and the uh, reflective ID 
for the employee. Cleaning the way I store this now. And it means I successfully stored it. So, okay, and that's all for my part. And I pass to the next of my group member. And thank you. Good day, sir. My name is Sam Wei Tong, and my student ID is 2105669. And now I will start to have a presentation in this authentication flow of, of our project. So from here, you can see that the face ID recognition device will capture the image and store the image in the S3 bucket, and it will call and wait for the result message to later place the call. And the image will, will pass for the verification, and the image will, in the Lambda function, will go to pass to the Amazon recognition to perform the analyzation, and the face ID will be returned to the Amazon Lambda function, and the face ID will take to the normal TV to perform the verification, and the result will be returned back to the Lambda function, and the, lastly, the result will publish to the topic in the AWS LD call, and the face ID recognition device that subscribe to the topic will be this will display the message. Yeah, so this is the architecture diagram of the flow I contributed, and now I will demo the part. So for this code, it's basically just to upload the selected image and to wait for the result. Yeah, and this five file is used to access to the AWS LD call. So we can, and now I will run this file. So you can see we can select just uh, just we can assume that the employees want to clock in. You can see after a few seconds, the the message so success to clock in for the employee J Chow. Yeah. And for example, he if he wants to clock up, you can see after a few seconds, we'll show the success to clock up for the employee. And if the user that have not registered yet, you can see from here. It will show after a few seconds show the not found message here. Yeah. So this is the result of the authentication. So now we'll go to the I'll explain about the services. So this is the so you can see the result from here. It show in the AWS LD in the topic, in the employee result topic. Yeah. Log in, log out, and not found. And this is the things are great that we created in the AWS LD. Yeah. So for the S3 bucket in the authentication, you can see the you can see the image, the name as the employee name and the the, the, the call in or call out date. Yeah, you can see it's successful order to the image folder in the image folder. And in and then you can see the employee call and call out time is successful record in the JSON file. Yeah. And the login URL can be also retrieved from here for easy to access. Yeah. And then this is the Lambda function that handle the logic. And the, all of the logic here, yeah. And basically, yeah. And this is the main function. We get the the bucket, bucket name, and the date date, and initialize the employee name and face file, and we get the bucket name and the key from the event, and then this is the response that sent to the the recognition to perform the analyzation. And if the response, if the image of is matched, so from here we can see the employee name and the department name is retrieved from the table for the face ID. And this is the attendant file key, which is need to store the record, the location we need to store the record. And this is the, the current date time, the new key, the face URL. And for this part is we copy the, just now we uploaded the image to the root folder. So we need to copy the root, the image in the root folder and rename as a new, as a new key, and store in the new location and in the root. The original image will be deleted. Yeah. So for this part, if is if we found that the employee want to clock out, we will record the clock out time, and you will publish a clock out message to the face recognition device. Yeah. Or else, then it will show the employee has already clocked out. And from here, if is if the employee want to clock in, you will generate a new attendant JSON file and put the object in the S3 bucket. And it will publish a success to clock in to the to the topic which the face recognition device is, is device subscribe. Yeah. And if the user is not found, it will, it will publish a not found message to the topic and will display in the facial recognition device. So this is basically my part. And I will pass the presentation to the next person. Thank you. This is the IWS architecture diagrams of mine, which is um, in charge with the Amazon SNS and also the Amazon CloudWatch. So the first thing that I would like to say is about the CloudWatch. So in a CloudWatch, Basically, CloudWatch is actually to monitor the alarms, metric sensor locks. So we can know what uh, the alarm has triggered in here and what's locked in here. 
And also the next one would be the uh, metrics. We can know what we are applying in these uh, services. In here, for apply SNS in Lambda, Lambda with S3 bucket, uh, SNS is basically to receive the notifications while we're doing the cloud in a cloud system. So by doing this, we have to create the topics. We have to create them. We will name it as a user notifications. And then here will pop up the uh, the topics with the user notifications. Then we have to click on the subscription to, to create a new subscriptions. And then in the setting, we have to do the things like um, we have to pick the topics from just now we create, which is the user notifications. And then with the protocols of email, and the endpoint is where the notification should be sent and then where we can accept the uh, cloud in cloud system, which is stated that it's successfully. So I'm using my email for now. And then after that, the subscriptions, we have to confirm. We have to confirm the subscription through the email. Uh, and then we have to accept. When we accept, if we have the notification saying that, okay, that is confirmed. Then you can see a status in the AWS Management Console, which is a status of confirm. Then after that, we go to the Lambda. We have to go to the Lambda, and then we have to search for the cloud in cloud system, which is the authentications of employee in the Lambda functions. So after that, by clicking in here, we can see that three goals in here will have the S3 buckets in here. And then uh, we already know that what is the uh, that class in the S3. So we have to add the destination to receive the notifications by add destinations. By uh, setting, do the settings in here, then we save it. And then we have then we see that the Amazon SNS is already activated. Then we go to the code. We have to do the publish message to the email. So by by doing this to to publish the message, we have to having the topic ARN, which uh, the ARN will get from the SNS topics and then to the user notifications, and then we copy the ARN into the uh, into our code. Then after that, we write a a bunch of words to publish the cloud in a cloud message, which is a the the, the result here in the the piece of code. And then we just like um, writing the quotes and then to publish the message. And then once the uh, pictures upload from the other side, from the S3, we can receive the email of the clock in and also the clock out. So in the clock in, we can see that, okay, just only clock in, but in the clock out time, we can see the both time, which is the clock in and also the clock out has successfully clock in or clock out. And this is all for my presentations. Thank you. My name is Long Function and my student ID is 2005 for F3. And I represent the antenna and quick side. So before using the antenna, we need to change some setting in the work group. Okay, we need to choose an S3 bucket that used to store the query result. So after changing this setting, we can go to the antenna and create a table. So we were choosing the S3 bucket data. So inside the create table, we need to name the data. We need to name the table and choosing a database. And we need to choose an input data set from the S3 bucket. After that, we need to name it the data format which is the table uh, type, a patcher height, and the file format JSON, since our employee attendance result is stored, is stored in the JSON type. So we need to choose a JSON. So the library will auto-select uh, by the system, and we, the properties will auto-generate when choosing this library. So next is the caller. We need to name, name it the caller name, same with the JSON file. So inside JSON file, we have the employee name, department, cut in time step, and cut out time step. So we just uh, name it in the column, and the column type we all always choosing the string because uh, we are using the JSON type. So this is a preview table query to check whether got any mistake or error inside. So after that, we just create the table. So create after uh, click the create table, we jump to the create editor, create editor, and we can just see our table which is work or not. So since uh, the result is completed, so means that our table is correct and none error. So we can choose the preview table to check our result, all the data which is retrieved or not. So inside here, we can see that all the data is retrieved and not data missing. Okay. So we can go to the quick site. So inside the quick site, we can, we can just uh, create a new data set, okay, new data set from the antenna and name it the data set and choose a work group and choose the table, catalog, and database that we created before, and choose the directory query of data, and click the preview data. So we will jump to the page to uh, do some filter or parameter from our data. If not, we can just publish uh, our data. So after publish the data, you will jump to the analysis page, which we can do some customized graph from our data. So if no problem, we can just publish the graph and do the dash dashboard. So since I just uh, customized two 
uh, two graphs. Since I just customize one graph and one table, so this graph is we can check uh, all the employee name by department and the table we can monitor the employee clock in a clock of time. So that's 